Welcome to another show. It's your boy Japanese Tutor. That was my little rendition of the dance that I would do for my uh, intro. Uh, <laughs> um, and we're going to do the Dutch again. Uh, this is our, I think, 15th episode. And we're just going to, it's basically about showing you the secrets of how to beat and destroy people in uh, the Dutch Stonewall. I actually played the Dutch Stonewall in an over the board tournament. And was able to beat a person rated 1950 so they were pretty strong but their fee day rating was 1900 and i assume that she can only get stronger and she was definitely playing stronger than 1950. Um, my performance rating for that tournament was 2290 so i was stoked but we're not here for for uh to talk about me we're just here for for the chess <laughs> all right so let's go into uh game 28 this is going to be by uh, Navarotsky versus Yuri uh, Korosinski. So d4, f5, knight f3, knight f6, g3, e6, bishop g2, d5, uh, castles, bishop d6, c4, and whenever they play c4, remember you play c6, b3, and then queen e7. We already have covered this in previous chapters. The reason is after b3, the point is to play bishop a3, um, removing this dark square bishop. Therefore, the, con the control of e5 favors white, or if they're able to control it more effectively. So we're going to play queen e7 to slow down that plan. So this position, and this is from the text, this position we have already considered in our first two lessons. We shall now have a second look from a different angle. Who will benefit from these two moves, b3 and queen e7, if white switches to the bishop f4 plan? So let's say that instead of going to b3, after you play queen e7, they play bishop f4. Now what do we do? And that's a really, really good point. I, I haven't seen read this yet i haven't looked at it but i think after that i think we should just take and we're just up a tempo because b3 doesn't make sense because after we take on f4 g takes on f4 castles king h8 rook g8 and we storm the pawn up on the g file that, that doesn't that favor us but let's see what maybe there are some little nuances this was played in budapest in 1991 so good question mickey all right, so uh, bishop f4. In principle, one advantage for white is that with the queen on e7, black cannot avoid the exchange of bishops with bishop e7. In practical terms, this is of little importance as black will almost always capture the bishop. So whenever this bishop comes to f4 and we can double these pawns, we should. Now, their grip of e5 does... You know does become a problem but we also have to consider that this g file is now semi open for us so we're looking for uh dynamic play on that part of the board all right so at first glance the two extra moves don't seem to make much of a difference white has supported his c pawn but weakened the c3 square Black has developed his queen to a square, which may not necessarily be the most desirable. It covers b7, but that's not very relevant when b3 uh, has been played. Because sometimes the queen on uh, e7, and I'm just going to pause from reading text here. You cannot play queen b3 since you already played b3. So that's an issue um, in some lines where they haven't played b3, that they play queen b3. And they're attacking now this pawn as well. But now they've played um, b3. This is no longer a threat. So the queen on e7 doesn't really make much sense. And that's what they're saying. But it's an extra move. And it gets out of the way of, like, let's say the castle. Maybe the rook coming over. So let's see what they have to say. 
Castles. Queen C1. That's really, really interesting, actually. So, uh, they say, we already know this queen exchange route. What, and there's a question in the text, would it have been an idea for black to delay castling, leaving the king in the center? Uh, should there be an early exchange of queens? And the answer is, yes, it would have been a nice idea, but it's hard to find a more flexible move than castling. Black must prepare to meet white's most testing ideas, and this queen exchange uh, isn't among them. So b6, queen a3, queen catches a3, knight captures a3, and knight bd7. If black prefers to keep the queens, you can play c5. So one of the lines that they gave is, if you don't want to trade, you can play c5, and there's nothing wrong with c5. Uh, also, queen takes is good as well. You're giving two different alternatives. And black calmly prepares the activity on the queen side. And there's another question here. Why is this position okay for black when you earlier warned against b6 development against the setup? Okay. Um, and the answer is the key is peace activity. In order to exchange queens, white has wasted time and misplayed his misplaced his knight. So the the knight's misplaced. And I think, okay. So normally in this setup, we would play here, here, and here. Now that the queens are off the board, I'm not sure what to do. This is like an entirely new position because the queen coming to h4, the knight, the rook coming over are all ideas in this sort of structure. Um, and then knight is kind of misplaced here and it really doesn't have a good home except to go b1 and maybe d2 or c3 the knight doesn't really do much on a3 so maybe that gives us an opportunity to do something else so let's see what they play and where i think we're both going to play on the queen side or maybe if they attack on the queen side maybe we're going to play in the on the king side because as you can see there's nothing happening in the center because this is locked down we, we can never push e5 we have to get that out of our minds because it's one two Three. This is super backwards. And a backwards pawn is a pawn that you cannot push without inflicting damage or loss of material. So what happens is rook fc1. So it looks like, um, oh wait, uh, sorry, knight bd7. Rook fc1. And then after that, you have knight b, uh, bishop b7. Maybe trying to contest this file over here. Uh, b4. A5. Obviously, we're going to do this to try to um, get this line open for our rook. And then after A5, B5, C5. Black is well placed for this standard queenside confrontation. E3 and Knight E4. This is always, pretty much always played. This Knight on E4 is like a gem. right so after the knight plays the e4 uh they have some more text over here it seems that black is fully equal white's knight on a3 for for the time being is performing a useful function but in the longer run a knight will rarely be happy on a3 for knights there are only three factors that count the first one being location second one location and the third one which is the most important location okay uh, just like any uh business uh location 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 uh, <laughs> uh rook c2 rook a to c8 because we know that this file is not going to open and there might be some uh some trouble brewing on this line rook a c8 rook a c1 c7 c captures sorry c captures d5 uh d e captures d5 z captures c5 rook captures c low rook captures c5 and this knight getting here would be an amazing for us we really can't push this because of this knight 
Okay, uh, rook taking really doesn't help. Just uh, yeah. If like we if we take here, this might actually benefit us because maybe this knight can take and get to a very active position. So I think we stand really really well here. Okay. Uh, so then he played after knight captures and then knight d4. So the question of the text is: uh, Isn't that knight on d4 a lot stronger than Black's light squared bishop? And you can bet your bottom dollar it is. Uh, that's my. That's I want to answer that question. Yes, this knight is much stronger than this bishop, like a thousand times stronger. This knight can't be kicked out of this square by a pawn. This is an outpost, and outposts are really, really useful, especially for a knight because you can see that they're blockading this pawn, and they can build up a lot of forces because this pawn's isolated to attack. Okay, but let's see uh, what happens. So, uh, oh, so they go on to say, uh, it certainly is. But if you compare minor pieces one by one, you must also compare the a3 knight to the one on e4. And once all is taken into account, the position appears roughly balanced. So they play g6, knight e6. Ooh. Rook capture c2, rook capture c2. Rook c8, rook capture c8 check, and bishop captures. Okay, so here, this, okay, so if we, let's just, I'm going to pause from this. Let's just take a look at the the pieces. This bishop is not really looking so hot. This delay, hmm, this is really not looking so hot. But, okay, so this bishop and this bishop are about equal because I have a center pawn in my way. And I would love to give this up for that, but I don't think I'm going to have the opportunity. This knight, whack. This knight can go to c5. But this knight can improve as this bishop can't. This bishop, I don't think it can improve. Maybe here, 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 here. Attacking the pawn. But that's one, two, three, four moves. And my king can get over here. So, and sorry, again, I live in uh, a very, very loud city. Okay, so. After that. They, uh, they say that this position is harder to play and evaluate than you might expect. If pressed for an evaluation, we would have to settle for equal. And I think that is fair. I think that's uh, really, really fair. Okay, so after that, um, bishop captures e4. This gives, up, this gives up white's good bishop because it was being kettled. And it improves black's pawn structure. Nevertheless, it seems to be sufficient for equality, which can not be said about so many of the other alternatives. So f captures e4. Now that the bishop finally has some space. Knight b1 trying to improve the knight. King f7. Knight c7. Looks like a mistake. This is probably too ambitious and possibly based on a miscalculation. And maybe uh, they were thinking about knight d4. I'm oh, sorry. They were thinking about some other moves. Maybe just knight d4 was better. Okay, so bishop b7. Knight c3. Double attacking that pawn. King e7. Can they take this? But then the king is really quick. Right? Hmm. I don't think you can take that, actually. I don't think, I don't think you can take that. My king is just so strong. This, this knight has nowhere to move, too. Wow, that's such such a strong move. Look at that. Such a strong move. <laughs> that's kind of like hidden in the position, right? The knights just can't move anywhere. 
Uh, that's pretty. That's pretty. That's pretty neat. So King E seven is a really really strong move. So Knight A four, attacking maybe this, and then D four. Quite possibly, this break is what White missed in his earlier calculation. So he played e captures d4, which is a somewhat of a mistake. But uh, king f1 was probably the best move. And then after that, king g6, asking where is this knight going? Knight e8, and then king d5. Hello. This decisive factor in this endgame is the difference in king power. So the rest of the game continues. h4, king captures d4, knight d6. Knight, bishop d5, cutting off a lot of the lines for, just basically making this knight pretty much dead. Uh, knight c8, bishop catches a2, takes, takes, knight takes, bishop to b3, hello. King f1, a4, knight catches a4, bishop catches a4, b6, bishop c6, king e2, sorry for that again, <laughs> king e2, uh, h5, stopping their activity, uh, King d2, and then uh, it is gg, because bishop b7, and we we know how to win this. Uh, if you looked at a lot of my endgame videos, uh, just this position alone. But um, if you need some reference, any bishop move does. And also king c5, just winning the bishop and then coming back wins. If you just need an easy way to win, just bam, bam, take this. Bam, come back, and then just dominate him with your extra piece. Yeah, this is from uh, Win with the Stonewall. Uh, it's been in a very, very instructive book so far, so um, I really recommend it. And the link's going to be down below for the book, uh, for those of you on YouTube. So the next one, the next uh, thing that I want to do is that now that we've looked at this game, let's try to take away something. Okay, so now that we looked it over, and this is what I like to do first. Whenever I'm studying a game or an opening, um, so I take a game, I look through it, I just enjoy it, see what they played, and then go move by move and try to understand why uh, this happened or why that happened, and try to come up with not specific lines. Again, we are not going over specific lines. We're going over specific ideas. And that is what we're looking for because you can memorize a whole bunch of lines and you can be great. But when you understand, when you have chess mastery of the different ideas, that's when you become a better chess player. And that's when you can think on your feet. Um, I, I know there's a, well, one of my friends, I'm not going to name him, uh, but um, he jokes. Okay. So he takes his um, coach's prep. He's, he's 2,100. He takes his coach's prep and he's like, I would say 26, 2700 in the opening, if you will. He's very strong because all he knows is his opening prep. But when it comes to the middle game stuff, it, there's something lacking because the ideas are just not there. Um, but that said, we're going to put in the work. So, uh, knight of six. Okay, bam. Then this is just some regular stuff. Bam. Okay, so bishop d6. And we know what we know the idea is to control here. This is controlling this, and we want to play the knight on e4. If c4, uh, four, we want to play c6. And sometimes we take this way because of the bishop, and sometimes we take this way because maybe there's going to be something happening on the queen side. Um, so we know this c4 and just play c6. b3, and we just want to guard against any bishop a3 ideas removing the bishop and also a guard of e5 and when the queen is on d6 let's say you were late to that and you wanted to react 
uh, by letting they, them take. Take now the queen is stuck guarding this e5 square, and they can easily put another knight via let's say knight c3, uh, a4, b3, uh, b sorry b2, and then d3. Okay. Um, okay. So next, queen e7, bishop f4. I feel like why are you inserting b3 if you're gonna play bishop f4? I guess one of the lines is that you do wanna play this maneuver. But you give black a lot of play, if you will. It's not very forcing, but okay, takes, takes. And I bd7. I like this move a lot. Um, just preparing to develop, preparing to play c5, just finishing development. And all development is what's happening. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, and okay, easy stuff. Now, on this, a, okay, so this is a really, really nice point that I want to make. When they're trying to press for space, try to attack them um, with a5. This happens a lot. So either play a5 as um, a prophylactic move where you prevent b4 and they have to spend another two moves trying to coordinate another uh, pawn advance or play it in response to b4. That way they have to do something with this because they don't want this to open. So, bam, forcing a response. B5, and then finally we're able to play C5. E3 is holding their structure. And actually, E3 is a very, very common move to see because they just want to play here and here, even with the queens on. So just from the pawn structure, it looks like white should be attacking over here. And black should be, I don't know, maybe they have two, actually two ways of attacking. Um, they can try to hold their ground here or create an attack this way. And this is all dictated by pawn structure. 94, bam takes 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 and i like this a lot i like this rook being here um with an idea of maybe playing here maybe in the future it's just really really powerful um and the minor piece plays okay so this knight is not as good as let's say this knight but this knight is horrible right like it can only go to b1 right um, let's say that oops, okay, so we're gonna go here, knight d4, takes six, and this knight just looks good here. That's why I was like, ooh, earlier on, and then after take six, bring it and off the mass exchanges. I think I think this is equal. Like this it's really hard to play. Um but the idea is okay. And I like White's idea of just taking here because this is a bad bishop or it was a good bishop, but it's hitting brick. It's not hitting anything at all. So it's very, very, very hard to play. And then playing F3 is really, really ambitious, right? So you don't want to do that because just knight C3, I, I'm going to win a pawn. I'm going to have a lot of like little picks over here. Bam. This knight is horrible. It has to defend a pawn. A knight, a piece, a whole piece has to defend a pawn. Right, and if you play like e4, then like king f7, like just works. Um, so bishop takes is I, I like that move a lot. Now this is the move that kind of surprised me, and this is maybe just a matter of skill. Um, that f takes uh is a little bit better. Sorry, f takes is a little bit better than e takes or d takes. Sorry, because you are opening the bishop's diagonal right away instead of having to move this knight and then move this bishop. So I like that idea. That's definitely something I'm going to take. Um, opening up the bishop's diagonal. Maybe even here. Here. And maybe breaking here. And then this king move. King e7. Wow. What a move. Stopping the attack over here. Now, black or white should try to get his king over here. But amazing, amazing. Uh, here or 
Yeah, just play, just play over. Knight a4. Just keeping this knight holding this pawn. Very simple plan. Uh, d4, just activating his pieces. I think king f1 is the best move, and so did the author. But what happened was takes king up, king up, and we can see how powerful the king is. And this knight is still looking really, really bad. Bishop d5. They're able to take a pawn, but this is bishop. When uh, It's really, really good when you have this uh, bishop working on two sides, right? So pawns on both sides of the board is usually better for a bishop. Um, and that's the main takeaway from this. Um, so just think about how you should play when they have already played b3 and then d and then play uh bishop f4. I think we should just take uh and yeah, Retal also gives a really really good idea of the the bishop d7, bishop e8, bishop h5 ideas as well. Um, so that being said, thank you guys so much for all the love you gave me in the last video. It was amazing. I think it's my mo it's my best performing video so far, and just thank you in general. <laughs> um, if you learn something from this video, com consider liking the video. Uh, if you want to see more stuff, there are more things in the playlist. This is uh, the fifteenth episode, so if you just started with this video, you you missed out on a lot. Uh, so thank you so much, and. Uh,